Welcome to episode 2 of the Stormworks Solo Tutorials. In the last episode, we learned the basics and made an example script to solidify many of the new concepts. If you haven't already seen it, I recommend you do watch it so you can get up to speed. In this episode, we are going to improve the code from last episode and learn how to draw buttons, a bar graph, and some text on the screen. Now, the buttons aren't going to be functional just yet, we will do that in the next episode, but we can draw them now. I highly suggest opening the link to the Stoneworks Lua IDE in the description and following along. Following along in the IDE will help you solidify your learning and allow you to explore the concepts of this video with ease. Last episode, I mentioned a math library that contains multiple useful mathematical operations. Here are some of my favorites. I also link in the description a site where you can view all of them. Math.floor can be used for rounding numbers to a certain number of decimal places. For example, here it is rounding to a whole number, and here it is rounding to one decimal place, and then two decimal places. There is also math.sign, math.cos, math.tan, and many more. So in the last episode, we talked about how the onTick function is executed every in-game tick, and is where you can put your input and output code. The onDraw function is where you can put your functions for drawing. It is also executed every tick, but it is executed by every screen that is connected to the video node on the Lua block. The screen library contains all kinds of functions for drawing to the screen. These can only be called within the onDraw function or your custom functions that are called from onDraw. Here is a list of some general functions, and here is a list of the functions for drawing shapes. There are also some functions for drawing text, but we'll get to those in a minute. Starting with the general functions, there is screen.getWidth and getHeight, and these will get the height and width of the screen. These are very useful when making things on your screen respond to screen size. Using these and some math, you can scale and move things based on the screen size, keeping everything readable. There is also screen.setColor, which allows you to set the color you are drawing in using RGBA values, although you can choose to not include the alpha value as it defaults to fully opaque. There is also screen.drawClear, which will clear the screen and draw the background as whichever color you have most recently set. So here you can see it will clear the screen and draw the background as green. Now on to the shape functions. These will all draw certain shapes like circles, triangles, rectangles, and lines. Adding a capital F between the shape and the left round bracket will fill in the shape, with the exception of lines because obviously there is nothing to fill in. The area filled in will be the exact same color as the outline of the shape, however you can still make outlines by overlapping shapes. Now let's look at each shape. Circles have the following arguments, the x position, the y position, and a radius. They're the simplest shapes to draw. Lines have these arguments, the first x position, the first y position, and then the second x and the second y positions. This way it draws a line from one point to the other. Triangles are like lines, but rather than two points, it obviously has three points. So there is the x and y of the first point, the x and y of the second point, and the x and y of the third point. And then all of these values are separated by commas. Rectangles have an x and a y value, and then a width and a height. They're pretty simple. There are two functions for drawing text. Draw text and draw text box. Let's start with draw text. Screen.drawText will draw text at the specified x and y coordinates, but will not wrap text. It is usually quite sloppy if the text is at all dynamic. Screen.drawTextBox will again draw text at the specified x and y coordinates, but you also specify a width and a height, similar to rectangles. Then you specify your text, and finally the horizontal and then vertical alignment, which are like aligning text in a document editor. A text box will wrap your text if its length exceeds the width set. Coloring can be a bit tricky sometimes. In order to draw something in a certain color, say red, you will have to use screen.setColor and then specify red and RGB values before you can draw a certain shape. A trick that I like to use though is to make a variable like C and make it equal to screen.setColor. That way I can just call C rather than the whole long function. So now, let's get back to the fuel tank example from the last episode. 
At the top, I've removed the function for turning off the fuel pumps, because we'll be controlling them manually next episode, and the function was more for demonstration purposes than anything else, as it was not very good code. Next, I have a function here for clamping values, just like the clamp logic block. This is probably my favorite function, I use it in almost every single script I make. Proceeding to onTick, you can see I removed some things from last episode. Again, this is because some of the code from last episode was just to demonstrate the concepts we learned and they weren't necessarily good code. Just after onTick, you can see I have a function for drawing buttons, but we'll come back to this in a second. In onDraw, I have a for loop that loops through the field pumps table and executes my draw button function. And you will notice I don't have a step value for this loop here. When the step is not included, it defaults to 1, which is exactly what we need. Now is a good time to look at the draw button function side by side. So you can see I passed the x, y, width, height, variable, text, and then two colors. One for on and one for off. So if the variable is true, then I set the color to the on color sent from when I called it. If it is false, then I use the off color. Then I draw a rectangle, and if there is text, then I draw a text box with the text in it. Now back to on draw. This is where I draw the bar graph on the right side to represent how much fluid is in the tank. Using some basic math, I take the fuel amount, which is a 1 to 0 value, clamp it just in case, then multiply it by negative 50, so it starts at the bottom here and fills up to the top, because this gap here is 50 pixels and 1 times 50 is obviously 50. Then I draw a text box to show the percentage left. This is as easy as clamping and flowing the fuel amount, multiply it by 100, and then adding a percent sign on the end. Now this works just fine on a 2x2 screen, but if I look at this on a larger screen, it doesn't look very nice. So now it is time to try some responsive design using screen.getwidth and screen.getheight. Now everything in this script is the same as the other one, except in onDraw. You can see I get the width and height of the screen, and then use those values and some math for the x and y values of the buttons and the bar graph. Now, the math here may look complex, but if you look closely at it, it is pretty simple. For example, the y for the buttons, I'm dividing the height of the screen by the number of fuel pumps plus 1. This is so the screen is divided so 4 buttons would line up in the middle of the screen with none of them touching the top or bottom. This gives 5 areas and 4 dividing lines. So now I can line the buttons up on those lines by subtracting half the height of the buttons. And the eye is of course so it moves based on which button is being drawn. Now our screen looks nice and works for multiple sizes of screens. And because we've made it both responsive to screen size and modular, it is easy to, if we wanted to, add more pumps just by adding more values to the table. Both scripts are linked in the description, but do note that they display slightly different in the online IDE, so they may appear to draw things one pixel too far over. However, when loading them in-game, they do appear correct. Now I would like to share a small list of custom functions that I find useful, and I'm sure many of you will as well. You can find a link to all of these functions in the description, and feel free to use them in your projects, no credit necessary. Also, don't forget the bottom of lua.flashpony.rocks has all the libraries and functions for use in Stormworks. In the next episode, we're going to add touch handling so we can actually use this screen to control the buttons.